Hi friends, Stephanie here and I'm back with more movie chatter. And as promised, what I have for you today are some underrated horror movies. Uh, I have one honorable mention and the reason it's an honorable mention is because I think this is a movie that was criminally underrated and I think it has slowly started to work its way out of the underrated category and more into the mainstream movie watchers. And that movie is Frailty. It stars uh, Bill pa the late Bill Paxton and Matthew McConaughey. And the basic premise of this is Matthew McConaughey walks into a uh, he he walks into a a, a a police station, and he tells the guy, "I I have a story to tell you." And it's about uh, they called the God's Hand Killer, which was his father, played by Bill Paxton. And we see flashbacks of his childhood. His father was a single father who by all accounts was a really great father, loved his kids, but one day he tells his boys, I've been contacted by angels that are telling me there are people we need to kill because I guess they are not righteous or, you know, whatever the case may be. They're doing things that they shouldn't be doing and for that reason they have to get them and kill them and he enlists the help of his young sons to capture these people and bring them into this like enclosure underground and kill them now this is not a gory movie but it is creepy and eerie and so unsettling and it's an excellent movie and we have matthew mcconaughey telling this whole story to this police officer it's either a police officer or an fbi agent but either one he's telling his story and we're seeing it through flashbacks and it's a really great great movie um the thing with this though is i think it was so underrated and i did an unofficial poll a few years ago Everybody I asked who was not part of like the movie enthusiast community, just the average moviegoer, had never heard of it even when I explained it. I did another poll a few weeks ago because everybody seems to be talking about it. It's on everyone's underrated list. Everyone's talking about it. We're sharing it on social media. Almost everyone I asked had either heard of it or had seen it. Even if they didn't know it by name, they had seen it and they loved it. So I think this one has developed a following. I think it's working its way out of the underrated category. And I think that is a great thing and a testament to what the movie community can do when we all band together. And I think this one is finding its light and it's finding its stride and it's finding its following. So tell me what you think. Is Frailty working its way out of the darkness? Let me know because it's a good one. And if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's a banger. Now, here's my list. Um, I think I have like 14 movies here, but I'm going to buzz through them. No spoilers. Promise. Uh, my first one stars Kevin Bacon. This is the imprint one. Um, this is from 1999. It is called Stir of Echoes. He plays a guy who doesn't believe in anything. No paranormal seances, uh, mediums, witchcraft, nothing. He goes to a party where his sister-in-law <clears throat> wants to hypnotize people. So he says, go ahead, try and hypnotize me. You can't. She hypnotizes him, allegedly. He says, I feel nothing. Nothing happened. He goes home, the days pass, he starts to feel weird, he's seeing things, he's having premonitions, the weird things are happening to him. He starts playing a song on his guitar that he doesn't know, and he, isn't, he doesn't know why he's playing this particular song, but he feels compelled to play it. And he starts to zero in on the house, and he feels like something in his house is trying to lead him to something, and he just becomes out of his mind obsessed. Kevin Bacon gives a fantastic performance, maybe one of his best in this one. And I don't want to say anymore because I don't want to ruin it. If you haven't seen Stir of Echoes, definitely put it on your list to check out. Um, it is readily available uh, as far as regular Blu-ray, DVD, things like that on Amazon. I don't know if this imprint one is available anymore, but you'll be just fine with the Blu-ray. So uh, definitely put Stir of Echoes on your list. Now this one, I wasn't sure if it was going to fall into the horror category. Uh, for me, it does, but I checked on IMDb and it is tagged as horror. It's Richard Gere and Laura Linney, and it's from 2002, and it's called The Mothman Prophecies. Now, I have talked about this before a long time ago on the channel. They say this is based on true events. I have had many people in the comments tell me that, yes, they lived in the area. They know it's based on true events. I've had people say they visited the area, and I guess there's a museum about these events. So it seems to be based on true events, like it says. Um, what we have is Richard Gere plays a reporter. I think he works for the New York Post or the New York... Uh, no, the Washington Post. And very, very early on in the movie, like the first few minutes, he and his wife are in a very bad car accident. His wife eventually dies, but before she passes in the hospital, she tells him, she says, didn't you see it? Didn't you see it? And he says, what are you talking about? She says she saw these two red lights or eyes or whatever. They chalk it up to her injuries, maybe medication they had around in the hospital, whatever. So he ends up, a few days later, he goes 
uh, he gets in his car and he ends up 400 miles away from his home in a town in West Virginia and he has and his car breaks down mechanical errors electrical electrical issues uh, mechanical problems he can't get the car started he has no recollection of driving there but he gets out he tries to find help he ends up connecting with the local law enforcement who tells him that there have been weird things happening uh, people who are usually very passive have been acting out violently People are saying they're having premonitions. They feel like something bad is going to happen. They feel like there's spirits around them. All kinds of crazy things are happening. And he, as a reporter, decides to investigate it. And then he starts having these weird feelings. It's very eerie, very creepy, very atmospheric. And whether you believe in this stuff or not, this is a fantastic movie. And I don't want to say too much about it because it's very easy to spoil. All I'm going to say is just watch it watch it if you have any interest in this kind of thing at all just watch it um this i don't know if the imprint one is still available but like i said it's uh, like the other one it's very easily available uh, at least on dvd maybe on blu-ray on amazon but definitely check out mothman prophecies it's well worth the watch very very good and very creepy now this one falls under the folk horror category i think this is great i showed it quickly in a uh, years ago um, I had just picked it up and everybody was saying to me, watch that movie now. But then I never heard anybody talk about it again. And it's fantastic. It's a Ben Wheatley film. It's called Kill List. And basically the guy, the main guy is a hit man who decides he's going to retire because his hit's gone wrong. He's done. He doesn't want to do it anymore. And he's very happy, very comfortable with his decision. But the people around him, he is offered in one more job. He is to kill three people, a priest, a librarian, and a member of parliament. He has no idea why. He doesn't want to take the job, but the people around him encourage him to do it. Take the job. Just do it. And all I can say is I was watching the movie. I thought it was good. I'm like, this is okay. It's good. It's kind of, you know, chugging along. But the ending absolutely floored me. It is amazing. And it makes the entire movie and it makes you immediately want to go back and watch the whole movie again and see what you missed. It is so, so good. Um, kill list. Highest recommendation. If you haven't seen it, Put it on your list. Don't do any research. Just watch it. It's really, really fantastic. And no one talks about it. Everybody told me to watch it, and then I don't hear anybody talking about it. It's never on anyone's list for anything. Uh, this one is one I showed quickly in my uh, recent collection videos of my horror collection, and a couple people did pick up on it, so I figured I'd talk about it because this is another one. I, it's great, and I don't hear anyone talking about it. It's 1998's Fallen with Denzel Washington and John Goodman. Denzel Washington plays a homicide detective who witnesses the execution of a serial killer. But then as time goes on, a little, little time passes and he starts to uh, see these homicides taking place that fit the profile of the guy he saw executed. He knows the guy's gone. He knows he's not here. He's not here anymore. He doesn't understand why these killings are taking place and why the people who are doing them are doing them. That's all I'm going to say. It is so good. It is so eerie and creepy and just it has all the elements of a great crime horror thriller movie. So, so good. Great performance from um, from Denzel Washington, as always. This would be a movie that would be really good for anyone. Like even if you don't like horror per se, I think you'll be fine with this one because it's a typical you know, it's a typical cop movie, but it does have those horror elements and some uh, maybe paranormal elements. But definitely check out Fallen if you uh, if you haven't seen it. I know it's one from way back in the day, but it, it's well worth it. Now, this one is a remake, and it's a remake of a George A. Romero film. And this is one case where I think I like the remake just a little bit better than the original. I like the original. I just feel like the remake moves at a better clip. It moves at a better pace. It has a little more oomph to it. That's just my opinion. And it is called The Crazies. It says, Fear Thy Neighbor. Long and short of it, this is an infected film. We have a town and it seems like the people are coming down with this virus that turns them into like these raging, like these raging m monsters that want to kill people. They're, they're cannibalistic, they're violent, they want to kill everyone. So what happens is they enact martial law and they try to contain the people who have contracted the virus and keep them away from the people who are still healthy so they can get the people out of the town before they catch this virus. That's all I'm going to say about it. It's super creepy, really good. Um, if you like this kind of thing, you're going to love this movie. I never hear anyone talking about this, and uh, I think it deserves so much more attention than what it gets, but 
I thought the crazies was a great time and you know what if you like it and you want to check out the original it's around I think it has an arrow release but really really good stuff and um, I like the pace that this moved at I was never bored I was never like you know what's going on no really really good and this next one I'm just gonna keep talking about it until people until everybody's watching it and it's probably it's because it's probably one of the best and most unique vampires I've ever seen it is Sir Ronan in Byzantium and um, if you've been around, you know, I've spoken briefly on it. You have, um, um, she plays her mother, Saoirse Ronan is the daughter. She's, uh, I guess she's like 200 years old, but she's stuck at 16 as vampires will be. Because um, whenever they turn, that's their age forever. But in this story, women are not supposed to be vampires. So the men are not happy with the fact that this woman has been allowed to become a vampire. So they are watching her and they are not happy with some de decisions he, she's made. So she meets this man who's kind of down on his luck, depressed, and she gets him to let them stay there and she turns his house into a brothel and she's kind of hiding behind the business she's running. She's running these business with these women and she's kind of hiding in plain sight, if you will, so that she can avoid these male vampires who are out to harm them. And I don't really want to say any more. All I can say is this is such a unique on the vampire genre. It's so different from anything I've seen. I highly, highly recommend it because while the mother's doing her thing, Saoirse Ronan's doing her own thing. And I don't want to get into what she's doing because I don't want to ruin anything for you. But it is just so good. And it really keeps you engaged right until the last shot. Um, I had Kelly watch it with me for the first time. And she's not a horror person. She loved this movie. It is so, so good. And even if you don't like the vampire thing, this is well worth it. You're going to enjoy this one. So check out Byzantium. Highest recommendation. Now, this is one that someone had asked where it was in my collection. I said it's over in the Vinegar Syndrome section. And I think this was a Vinegar Syndrome partner label uh, release. But it is still available. But it's just available in the standard. Uh, standard. It doesn't have the nice slip case. This is called Sensor. And I thought this one was really good. It gets okay it gets okay marks on IMDB. But this is another one. I don't hear anyone talking about this. And it is so good. Um, that we have a gal who... It takes place, like, I think it's in, like, around the 1980s. Anyway, she's a censor for these video nasties in the, in, in the UK. And she was a censor who has to sit and she has to watch these violent violent movies and she has to decide what is okay and what isn't what has to be taken out and what can what can pass so the public can watch these movies and she is a censor but she's watching these violent crazy images all day and she is very when she reports back she's very matter of fact totally unaffected by everything that she's seeing all day long until something starts to happen and she it triggers a past trauma in her life and I don't want to say any more about that because it'll it'll ruin the movie um, but she is now haunted by these images that she's seeing and she feels like she it's trying to lead her somewhere to get answers for something that have to do with this trauma it can feel a little confusing in parts of the third act but just hang with it because I think it is well worth it and I think that the good outweighs the confusing in this one I think censor is just brilliant I think it's a really fantastic movie and if you have interest in like the history of video nasties and censorship and censoring and all that I think you're really gonna like this one I know you will and people have asked about it on the channel but I don't really ever see anyone talking about it so I figured you know what I think it falls into the underrated category and I think censor is well worth a look now this one going in a totally different direction. This one is just a lot of fun. I have mentioned it before. It stars Ryan Reynolds, uh, Ryan Reynolds in The Voices. And he plays a guy who, um, he has a psychiatrist. He's working um, for a plumbing supply company. He has a crush on a gal. And he gets up the courage to ask her on a date. But maybe she stands him up and he's not taking it real well. But he has got some real issues. And... He has a really, the, the cat is telling him to do horrible things. He's talking to the cat, he's talking to the dog, and he's really, he's bonkers. But Ryan Reynolds is so good in this one. It's a very, it's very much a dark comedy, but it also has a lot of horror elements to it. And I think it's going to be like nothing you've ever seen before. I do not hear anyone talking about this one either. And more people should be watching this, talking about it, sharing it. If you've seen the voices, let me know. 
I think it's an amazing performance from Ryan Reynolds. It's definitely a different performance for him, but he's so, so good. He brings it just like he does in everything, but I think this is really good, and uh, I think it's criminally underrated. Now this one, this is a tough watch, This, but, but I think it's good, and this is another one that the ending is like, wow. Uh, it's called Eden Lake, and we have a couple, uh, Michael Fassbinder co-stars in this one, but um, we have a couple, and there is a camping area that they like to frequent, and it is closing down because they're going to be building something there, and people aren't going to be able to camp there, so they decide to spend one last weekend there. But as they set up camp, these kids show up a little ways down and really start to bother them. They're really a nuisance. They're very loud. They're obnoxious. They're not very nice. And we find out that they are very, very sadistic kids. And they basically start to hunt this couple down and do terrible things to them. But I don't want to say any more. All I can say is watch it. Hang with it. It's not an easy watch. It's very, very unsettling at times. And it's, ve it's, it's got a lot of violence in it, okay? So we're going we're gonna to put that out there. So if you're triggered by that, maybe give a pass to this one. But if you, you, know, if you like this kind of thing, definitely don't pass up on e Eden Lake. It's a good one. Um, and like I said, it's all about the ending. The ending just, the ending floored me, but really, really good stuff. Uh, held my attention the whole way through, and I really do think this deserves a lot more attention than what it gets, but Eden Lake is, a uh, Eden Lake is the next one. Now, here's a criterion. I have talked about this one, and I'm going to continue to talk about it. It is a French horror film called Eyes Without a Face. As you can see, we have a gal wearing a mask. This one is from 1960. It's 90 minutes in black and white, and it is in French with English subtitles. For my spine friends, it is spine number 260. So it's been in the Criterion for a very long time. Uh, basically, long and short of it, we have a gal who's been in a terrible accident that left her terribly disfigured. Her father feels guilty about the accident, and he is hell-bent on doing a face replacement. So he starts to capture women who fit the physical uh, profile of his daughter, and he tries to do face transplants on them, from them to her, and they keep failing. She feels that she can live with things the way they are, and she doesn't like what her father's doing, but she kind of just goes along with it to keep him happy and lessen his guilt, if you will. But this is another one. It's such a good movie, so creepy, so atmospheric, so demented, if you will. And it has one of the best endings I've seen in a very long time. It is such a great ending. And if you've seen the movie, you know. The only thing I've ever heard people complain about on this one is they don't like the score. They didn't like the music that played through the movie. Uh, it didn't stand out for me. So I I'm going to have to check it out again because it didn't, it didn't bother me. So uh, the score wasn't an issue for me. But that was the only thing I've ever heard people say that they didn't like about this. But I just think this is one that deserves so much more attention than what it gets. Obviously, somebody likes it. It's in the Criterion Collection, but I think it's fantastic. And uh, if you don't mind some French subtitles, definitely put this one on your list. Maybe for the next uh, next month, November, the sale. And this one I've talked about also. It is uh, Session 9, and we have a group of guys who are hired to uh, remediate asbestos from this abandoned asylum, and that is the building. And as they get into it, what they start to find out is that one of the guys finds tapes. This this asylum, supposedly, there was a lot of uh, abuse of the patients, a lot of unconventional things went on, um, not very nice things. Um, maybe there was some medical malpractice that went on. They just, they weren't following the rules and they were treating the patients very poorly. So there are ghosts in this, in this um, building. And one of the guys doing the remediation comes upon these tapes and he starts listening to them and the woman has multi, uh, person, uh, multi personality disorder, and so he's meeting all these different personalities, and that is leading him down a very scary road. And this is a very creepy, very claustrophobic, very dark, dark movie. And this is one where I say the building is actually a character in the movie, but this is so, so good. And I can't say much more about it because I will ruin it. And you know I'm not about that. If you haven't seen Session 9, definitely check it out. It's very, very good. Um, this one, you're going to want to feel... I've talked about this one too. And this is one that will make you want to take a shower after you've seen it. It's uh, Vincent D'Onofrio in Chained. Uh, he plays a uh, taxi driver. Supposedly he's posing as a taxi driver. 
And what he does is he picks up fares and he kills them. But he decides there's one young boy who he picks up, the young boy and his mother. He kills the mother. He keeps the boy. He chains him in his house for like, I don't know, like maybe like 12, 15 years. And the whole time the boy is there, he is basically his slave. He's not allowed to eat unless the guy tells him he can eat. He's witness to him bringing home women who he kills and then gets rid of. Um, he's witness to all kinds of things. He's treated poorly. And he is just stuck there, chained to this wall and chained to this like futon type thing. And it is such a creepy, disturbing, gr gross movie. And like I said, it's going to make you want to take a shower afterwards. Vincent D'Onofrio is brilliant in this. He is so unlikable and so disgusting, but he nails it. He's so, so good. And this is another one, big, big, big ending. And I'm not going to get into it, obviously, for obvious reasons. But if you haven't seen Chained, put it on your list because it's very, very good. And uh, it'll surprise you, but it's really good. It's tough, tough subject matter, but it's very, very good. And the last one I'm going to talk about, I've spoken about it before, it's called The Dark and the Wicked. This one creeped me out way more than I thought it was. It takes place on this, like, old sheep farm, and two adult children go back when they find out their father is sick. The mother has said to them, stay away, don't come back. They go against her wishes, and they go back, and they quickly find out why they shouldn't be there. And what I can say about this one is it is eerie, it is creepy, it is dark. It takes place on this creepy dark farm where there are noises in the night things that go bump in the night and everybody is acting super weird and they're not really sure why but they quickly find out and it is it is just really 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 dark and it's got that paranormal thing going on but it's not one you will soon forget i think the dark and the wicked is so deserving of so much more attention than what it gets but if you haven't checked this one out highest recommendation for this one I think you will be surprised at how good it is because, like I said, I never hear anyone talk about this one either. Pretty much the same on, on anything on this whole list. I don't really hear anybody talking about most of these. So The Dark and the Wicked would be my last pick for now. Um, hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this. I want to thank you for watching, as always. Hopefully you found a few to add to your list. Don't dig into these a lot. If you think it sounds interesting, just go in blind and watch it and see what happens. Or stream it. If you're not sure, just give it a stream. I'm sure most of them are streaming somewhere. Check Shutter first. Um, so again, I want to thank you for watching, as always. I'm going to put up my video schedule for the week over on the community tab if you want to check that out so you know what's coming next. But uh, that's going to do it for me today. If you like these kind of videos, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when I'm going to upload again. And I'm going to see you guys, I guess, again on Friday. So for now, that's a wrap.